Hello friends, welcome to MS Optic Webcast and in this video demonstration, we are going to see how to install and configure WDS service on Windows Server 2012 R2. So for this demonstration, I am using this Oracle VirtualBox VM and in this VM already I installed Active Directory Domain Service and uh, we have a working DNS as well as we have a DSCP server. So let's install the WDS rule on this server. So to do that, just click on Add Rules and Features on before you begin page, click on Next. And on a select installation type page, select role piece or feature based installation and then click on next. On select destination server, select the local server that is our uh, this VM srdfndc01.mylab.local and the IP address is 192.168.49.1. Click on next. And on select server role page, select Windows deployment service as well as uh, include all the features that are required by. WDS service so click on add features and then click on next on select fe feature page we do not need additional features just click on next to continue now this is a brief overview information about the WDS service so there's a requirement over there that WDS service requires that DHCP and DNS service are available on your network and the transport server does not require any additional tools and services so click on next on uh, WDS page and on select role service select both deployment server as well as transport server then click on next and on confirm installation select send page click on install to start the installation and that's it installation succeeded on this local server click on close to close this installation wizard and uh, click on tools open windows deployment service management console and expand servers and here our server is there that's our dfn dc01 uh, yellow symbol is uh, pointing that the server is uh, not configured so to configure WDS service on this server just right click on it and select configure server here is a list of prerequisites that's uh, required by WDS service uh, the server is member of Active Directory Domain Service or uh, the domain controller itself and uh, if you are going for a standalone mode that time uh, Active Directory is not necessary there is an active DHCP server on our network because the PXC which relies on DHCP for IP addressing. And there is an active DNS server. Uh, we have a DNS server and this server has an NTFS file system partition on which we are going to store the installation images. So click on next to continue. And we are going for integrated with active directory WDS. That's why I select first box and click on next. Now where you are planning to store the installation image. So by default the path is C colon less remote installation but for this demonstration I already created one partition that is E drive and we want to store the installation image on E drive so let's specify this location E colon less remote install that is the folder name where we are planning to store the uh, install image and boot image so click on next to continue and if the DHCP server is running on this server. Check both of the following checkboxes and use the DHCP tool to add appropriate PXC options. Now let's open the DHCP management console. Here's the DHCP management console and let's expand the uh, scope options. And scope options. So now, as you have seen, we have uh, three options first one for router, DNS, and DNS domain name. Uh, select both box and then click on next now here's the px server initial settings uh, select respond to all client computers known and unknown but if there is an unknown computer that must require uh, administrative approval then the installation will be start on that computer click on next the service did not respond to the start or control request in a timely fashion okay click on finish and uh, just right click on it Let's manually start the service. So select all tasks, start, and yeah. So now, if we see first on a E drive, we have a folder remote install, and under that we have a boot image management store template folders are there. Okay, and on DHCP, just right click on it and select refresh. Okay, does it no changes? Uh, under server options, click on refresh okay and under server options now we have a 060 options pxc client and it's a standard and value is pxc client 
Okay, so let's come back on our uh, WGS server and here's the options for install image and boot image. Okay, so let's add uh, one uh, image. So I just mount a uh, ISO image of Windows 8.1 Enterprise Edition and let's uh, add the installation and boot image to our WBS server for Windows 8.1. First, we are going to add boot image and to add a boot image, just right click on it, select add boot image and the browse the location and it say in uh, DVD that is under source folder. Okay, so click on browse, uh, browse the uh, DVD tab under source, here is the boot.vm file. Okay, so boot.vm, click on next and here I want to specify Windows. 8.1 setup 8.1 setup okay click on next next and this will upload the boot image to our wds server okay the selected image was successfully added to the server click on finish and here you can see your image name is there microsoft windows 8.1 setup and let's add an installation image so let's add install image and specify the name i want to specify the name windows client group click on next Click on browse and select install.vim file. Click on next and here we have a Windows 8.1 enterprise image. There's a single image but suppose if you have an all-in-one image, that time all image will be displayed over here. Click on next, next and this will take some time to upload the install image to our server. And that's it. The operation is complete. The selected image was successfully added to the server. And here we go. So now our WDF server is ready to deploy Windows 8.1 OS by using this WDS server. So that's it for this video demonstration. In the next video, we'll see how to deploy Windows 8.1 OS by using the WDS server.